Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. November 1st, 2023. Let's get into it. Boy, this is the end. This is the end, my friend, the end. I've never, uh, if you don't want to watch probably the most uh, disturbing video I've ever made, you better cut off right here. <laughs> I, had to, I actually had to get out for a hike. I said, you know what? I can't make this video. I was sitting down in my chair. I said, man, I, I got to just get out in nature and get my head on straight to make this video. Because I don't see an off-ramp. They do not see an off-ramp. Too many forces have a line. And, well, let me just get into it. The first thing that's going to happen, I'm predicting is this Friday, Hezbollah is going to declare war on Israel. Uh, and that's going to be huge. I don't know how many missiles they got, like 40,000. Already the Iron Dome is failing because the Houthis, they didn't formally declare war, but they launched a bunch of missiles into Israel. And uh, I don't see an off-ramp because Israel is not going to stop killing Palestinian civilians. Uh, they just hit, uh, if you haven't followed along, they hit a refugee camp. Uh, I don't know how many uh, or Palestinians they killed, but it was huge. And Because uh, this speech that's going to come out on Friday, uh, I guess this guy's kind of like the Pope in a certain kind of way. And he gives a speech, I don't know, a certain number of times a year or something, and this is the big speech. Now, before they hit the refugee camp... He might have just said, you know, we're going to, you know, we want Israel to stop, maybe some harsh words. I don't think he can get away with that now. His, his whole Arab uh, following is clamoring for war. Uh, hell, every Muslim in the, in the whole world is clamoring for war. So, uh, and I don't see Israel. They're not going to stop. They're not going to stop killing Palestinians. Yeah, that's the thing. They're not killing any Hamas. If they were going after Hamas, I would say, okay, good. You know, go in there and get them. They're not. They're, they, the Zionists, okay, I'm not talking about Jews, okay, I'm talking about Zionists. They're, they're, they're lunatics. They want the extermination of the Palestinian nation or the people, Palestinian people. And they are not going to stop unless the Arab world stops them. So what's going to happen when uh, Hezbollah goes in? Well, that's going to embarrass Iran. You know, because their people are clamoring for war. I don't think the leadership in Iran will be able to stay out of it. And especially once the U.S., because as soon as Hezbollah declares war, the, uh, the ships are going to take off from the carriers and they're going to start bombing. And then what's going to happen? Well, we got a base in Syria. And right now the Russians are staying out of it. They've allowed Israel to go into Syria and bomb it without any sort of retaliation. Because they, they have air defenses in Syria and they have not activated those defenses. They've allowed Israel uh, to go in and bomb well supposedly Iran Iranian militants in uh, in Syria without any sort of uh, you know retaliation. Well I think that deck of cards is about to come to an end. So if if and when Hezbollah declares war and the United States gets into it, which we're definitely getting into it, you realize that they just canceled the Marine Corps ball because they said that, uh, uh, well, the, the war drums are beating and, uh, and there's no way that, that we got an off-ramp. So they didn't want to distract from uh, other priorities. I think that's how they put it. Marine Corps ball. I don't even remember us ever canceling the Marine Corps ball. Maybe it was canceled back in World War II. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so let me get back into it. So why do I say there's no off-ramp? Well, this is uniform in, in Congress. There are very few dissenting voices in Congress that are asking for us to seek a diplomatic solution to the crisis. You got the Republicans, and I didn't realize Mike Johnson, well, he's a huge Bible thumper for sure. And I, I thought that was a good thing because I wanted an evangelical Christian as my speaker, but this means he adheres to the we will support Israel at all cost uh, uh, mentality. So Israel can do no wrong. They can just keep committing genocide, and the Speaker of the House is all for it. So are a lot of the uh, other Republicans. 
And then, of course, the warmongering Democrats, you know, they always want war. That's, uh, and so all of them are lined up for us to go to war. So there's no stopping this. No stopping it at all. Now, what are the repercussions of all this? And I want you to think about this. Because we do have maybe some investment opportunities coming up. And I'm looking into it right now. I always try to help you out as much as I give you the bad news. Okay, if, if and when Hezbollah enters... Now, if Iran gets into it, that means that all that oil in the Middle East is not going anywhere. That means Europe's going to not get any oil. You're not going to get any oil. It's going to be just like in the 1970s, which I realize that maybe some of you watching my videos weren't alive then. But that was when back in the Jimmy Carter days when the oil embargo uh, ran oil prices up beyond belief. And uh, so when no oil is coming out of the Middle East, oil prices are going to go through the roof and we've already used up our strategic oil reserves so that's going to crush the united states that's going to crush your grocery sales because nobody's going to be delivering goods there's going to be starvation i'm predicting uh it's going to be devastating and we got the natural gas pipelines that go through turkey and uh those could be shut down if turkey enters into the conflict they've already launched 100 ships which i talked about in a previous video so that's, uh, that could happen. So now you're strangling Europe of oil and gas. And of course the United States to a certain degree. We've got pretty much our own supply of natural gas for the most part. I don't think we import, well we weren't importing any under the Trump administration and I'm not sure if Biden has completely turned that around and that we might be importing natural gas at this point. So what are the investment opportunities? Well, I'm gonna look at some uh, oil futures and I'm going to look at natural gas futures. And uh, if, if they haven't already gone out of sight, now might be a good time to, to look into that. Or if you want to just buy some oil stocks, you know, you got BP, uh, ExxonMobil. I have to look at the price on those. It's, if it's already been run up, I'll probably just hold off. Because uh, yeah, you're not going to make much profit just by buying the stock. You know, the, the, the huge money is to be made in trading options and, and betting on what I'm telling you is going to be going to take place. So, the other huge event that's going to take place if this all comes about, as I'm predicting, is the derivatives. I know that most people don't understand derivatives, and I don't really understand it that well myself. I just know that they're insurance contracts, where people take out insurance contracts on insurance contracts on insurance, and there's a quadrillion, <laughs> a quadrillion in these derivatives floating around, and I... Uh, when that, uh, that whole market, if, if the price of gas goes up and the price of oil goes up, those derivatives are going to get called. And those insurance contracts are not going to get covered. That's going to implode the whole financial system of the United States. I, you know, we could be seeing the dollar cease to exist, hyperinflation. Uh, you know, nobody can get gas because we don't have any. No strategic oil reserves. You're like, man, is there any good news <laughs> in, this, in this picture? I don't see any, and I don't see an off-ramp. Because uh, under Netanyahu, he's a Zionist. He wants the extermination of the Palestinian people, so they're not going to stop. The other thing that's, a, that's a, uh, amazing to watch, the whole world, the whole world is against the United States and Israel right now. In the United Nations, they've had a couple of votes. Most everybody, most every nation in the world is voting for a peaceful solution or a diplomatic, uh, at least enter into diplomatic talks about a two-state solution where Israel and Palestine could, in some fashion, maybe with some UN troops in between to, to keep the peace, exist as two separate nations with their own autonomy. That seems to me the only peaceful way out of this. Otherwise, Israel is going to continue the extermination of Palestinians and I think the whole damn Muslim world is going to come up. So now what's going to happen? Israel can't stand against that, nor with the United States help can they stand against that. I don't care, we only got 2,000 Marines. The base in, base in Syria, is they're, they're all dead for sure. The, the base is in Iraq. They, all the Americans there are going to be dead So because uh, we can't get the, the troops or anything in there to help them out. I mean, when you're being overrun by hundreds of thousands of Muslims and you only got a thousand soldiers, number one, you're going to run out of ammo. <laughs> and they are not going to stop, you know. So uh, just, just painting a 
dismal picture here for you. So we really, and of course we got nuclear weapons in Turkey, you know, and those bases could be overrun. So uh, I don't know, man. I, I'll probably think of something else to add to this video, but it looks like a real, real dark future here in the coming weeks. And I just don't see an off ramp. The Congress is not going to go on an off ramp. Israel is not going to go on an off ramp. And I don't think the Muslim nations or I have any uh, any off ramp because there's no diplomacy taking place so Biden and well oh yeah the last thing I wanted to point out to you is we know Hamas and Hezbollah have terrorists in the United States but thanks to the Biden administration that's what they wanted the Democrats want chaos in the United States now once the United States enters the conflict with the with the bombing of Hezbollah which is probably where it's going to start those terrorist cells in the United States are going to activate. We're going to have a lot of dead Americans on our hands. And what I'm predicting is the Biden administration, then they're going to put in emergency powers and try to take away everybody's guns. Like that's going to do any good. And getting back to guns, you know, I already talked about the fact that the Israelis didn't have any guns. And there was two things that I found out in the, in the last days since I made the last video. Number one was there was a bunch of uh, uh, young girls, and I said young girls, young women, Okay, Israeli soldiers, okay, and they were up in, the, in those uh, towers, you know, monitoring the uh, Hamas. So when Hamas came across, guess what happened? They didn't have any guns. Hamas massacred them. This is a little dirty secret that Israel doesn't want to get out. If those women had had guns, they could have defended themselves. But instead, Israel was so paranoid about its own people because they've been, Israel's been a major political battle. Netanyahu was trying to become dictator over Israel and the people were fighting back. So that's one of the reasons Hamas was able to invade so easily because Israel was, wasn't focused on, on external threats. They were focused on internal threats. So that was the first story that came out. The second story that came out was there was actually two battalions right there when Hamas came across. And it was a hell of a battle. A lot of things that Israelis don't want you to know. They just say that they massacred civilians. No, it was a big time battle and the Israelis held nothing back. And there's a lot of stories coming out now that Hamas had taken uh, prisoners. And because and this was on the Israeli side of the wall. And they holed up in, in a bunch of structures around that area. Well, Israel didn't give a shit about the hostages. They blew the hell out of those buildings. And most of those hostages, those Israeli hostages, were killed as a result of Israel's anger at Hamas. And that's part of their policy, is they don't, uh, they don't listen to, to, there was no hostage negotiation that took place. They just blew the hell out of it until they killed every Hamas soldier. And in the process, they murdered a lot of their people. These are little hidden secrets that don't come out that you might want to know. Hey, Gunnar, I always think of stuff after I think I've got everything in the video, there's two other things I want you to understand. This is a religious conflict. And hell, even talking to a couple friends of mine who are very religious, they see this as the, uh, uh, that it, that's the, it, it, the fight Israel is fighting for their homeland, uh, which was promised to them by God. And uh, so if and when, you know, a million or two million or three million screaming Muslims come across and they're chasing uh, Israel out of the uh, area Israel's got nukes and they've already said they're going to use those nukes now I've heard rumors that Egypt has got plans to go in and seize those land-based nukes uh, before Israel could possibly or maybe get them before Israel could set them off and then I and then I, I didn't even know this I guess Israel's got some nuclear submarines too and those nuclear submarines are independent so no matter if you get the nukes on land or they get some sanity, those submarines are gonna launch. And that's the end of the Middle East as we know it. And that could be the end of the world because then North Korea might launch. You might drag in, uh, well, we don't know if Iran has nukes. I don't think they do. We might drag in Russia, China. All right, so when the nukes start flying, that's, that's why I'm telling you we need peace. We need to stay the hell out of the war. Okay, I understand all these Bible thumpers. They think this is the, you know, Israel's promised land. They think, but Israel needs to stop. They need to stop and negotiate a solution. 
and embarrass Hamas. Because see, once they start negotiating with Hamas, the Arab world's going to calm down. They're going to say, okay, all right, this is this, we, we saved face. Okay, a lot of Muslims, you don't understand, saving face is very important in the Muslim world. And right now, they're not saving face until they go to war. And so the only way that Israel can get off of this is escalation to the escalation ladder, as the Duran likes to put it, is to start negotiating for peace and bring Hamas to the table. And that way, you know, they, they're, they're showing some humility and saying, okay, you know, maybe we can come up with a solution to this. And that allows the Arab world to save face and it'll end the war right there. But I don't see that happening. I don't see it happening. And especially when you listen to the radio, uh, you know, like I listen to Todd Starnes and or Sean Hannity sometimes. I don't even like Sean Hannity. He just parrots the same old thing all the time. But they are there. All of the right-wing hosts are, you know, blow up Palestine, kill all the Palestinians, and that's all you hear on the radio. So even the American people are being brainwashed into this thing. This is a this is a lose, 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 lose for the entire world, and especially for the United States. Because if we can't get our oil and natural gas, we're done, man. We're done. Oh yeah, one last thing. <laughs> so you might say, well, Israel should launch the nukes. Well, do you understand? That's the end of Israel. Because, guess what? Pakistan's got nukes too. And they already said they're going to launch on Israel if Israel launches on the Arab world. So you can see that Israel is going to die any way you go in this scenario unless there's a peaceful outcome or a peaceful solution to this whole situation. I'm just saying. And then also Pakistan has made negotiations to give nukes to Turkey. But like I said, Turkey could just go ahead on those on those U.S. military bases and seize those nukes. Now the problem is I'm not sure how they would get past the, uh, the uh, technology to, to be able to use them. But I imagine over time they could figure it out. But if the Pakistanis give them nukes, they can use those right away. Just saying. Well, came up with one last thing that I wanted to add to the video. And I talked about this in previous videos. You understand the United States is broke. We're not shipping money, the 14.1 billion, to Israel. We're issuing debt. And guess what? Nobody's buying up our debt anymore. In fact, China's selling off our debt. This whole house of cards is going to come tumbling down. And guess who's going to be left holding the bag? The U.S. taxpayer. So yeah, we, we definitely want to beat those war drums and we're going to support Israel. Well, yeah, maybe uh, back in the 1940s when, uh, when we were the, the, the superpower with lots of industry and uh, you know we could take on a little bit of debt back then. We can't take on this debt no more. This is going to collapse our financial system. Okay, I hope you understand that. So hold on to your jack straps. Yeah, I don't think the American people know what's coming. It's going to be horrific. I don't know if you can see him. Check out the deer. Yeah, this is why I come out hiking. Oh, there he goes. Oh, never mind. So, dee -dee 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 just the latest in the news. The, uh, they're estimating between 750 or to 1,000 Americans, 250 of which are hostages, 500 of which I guess were visiting Gaza when the war began, and uh, they're not being allowed to leave. I guess you could kind of look at them as hostages, and I think there might be another 250. So there you go. War is inevitable. No way around it. Unless uh, somebody gets some sanity and wants to do some diplomacy. I know diplomacy is not a word that the warmongering Democrats would ever listen to. And I'm not sure the evangelical Republicans are going to listen to it either. Just saying. I think I've covered just about everything for this video. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, 
That rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later God's gonna cut you down.